Let's go ahead and continue going over some of the other settings here available to us in a post-process volume. So let's look at lens flares. This, this is a pretty cool effect that also a natural phenomenon that happens with uh, camera lenses and bright light sources in the real world. So by default our intensity is 1.0 and lens flares are going to come from pretty much any bright areas of your image. doesn't necessarily have to be a big old spotlight or something like that. It can be coming from any bright light source. It could be, for example, really bright reflection off a metallic or a mirror surface on something. It could be from, in this case, my really bright sky, which has a lot of bloom, and that explains why the lens flares are so strong. But um, usually I like to go with a low setting like 0.1 or 0.25 works pretty well. just depends on the, each uh, environment is going to be different. I can crank it up just for instructional purposes so you can see it. I'm going to leave it at 0.5. I think that's... Uh, good enough. So if I come over here, I'm going to show you how ambient occlusion works. Now we have the ability to do screen space ambient occlusion, which is pretty cool. If we turn it on, and let's turn on the radius as well, let's take this intensity right here and we'll knock it down to zero. So you can see it there. Uh, the only ambient occlusion is from the light mapping from light mass. But these little kind of crevices and stuff could really take advantage of some extra boost in ambient occlusion. So we can crank that up and we get this nice, very subtle uh, effect of these contact shadows between the two tightly, uh, the two tight surfaces that are pretty close to each other. We also have the ability to change the radius. Now, personally, I recommend you leave the radius alone. You can crank it up or tweak it if you want, but in my personal experience, changing the radius really doesn't help. If anything, it kind of ruins the, the look of the ambient occlusion. In my opinion, that's just my artistic opinion. So I like leaving it at the default of 40. And uh, that works pretty well. We also have the ability to turn on motion blur, which we're really not going to be able to see here just because I don't have anything, you know, characters running around or, or anything like that. But motion blur can be pretty cool to add some more of a cinematic flair to your uh, to your game. Screen space reflections are really really cool so let's have a look this is a good example here with the uh, coffee mug here. I'm gonna go ahead and check all of these on. I'm gonna take the intensity and set that to zero. And Now you see that we don't have any screen space reflections but I'm gonna start to crank that up so that you can see the difference. So I'll tune it to one, two, that's a little bit too subtle, can't really see it. Once we get up to 50, we can start to see it. So you can see the screen space reflections starting to pop up, especially on this shiny reflective coffee mug surface. We can also adjust the quality and also the max roughness, but I'm going to keep cranking the intensity up. So now you can see with an intensity of 100, we can really start to see the reflections of the different objects and stuff um, on the surfaces, which is really cool and more realistic. So you have the ability to do those really cool screen space reflections, which can look awesome. We can go ahead and adjust the quality as well. So you can increase it or decrease it. I like leaving it at the default, but uh, maybe if you're doing a portfolio piece or something, you might want to increase it all the way. Now the max roughness is pretty cool because that's going to change the roughness of the appearance of the reflections on the different uh, reflective surfaces, which can be pretty cool. Just an extra parameter to tweak and to be able to adjust to your heart's content. So that's pretty much uh, screen space reflections.